We are going to be discussing today how America ends up becoming solely responsible for this war. And we'll go ahead and get started, give you the one minute to start writing, and then I'll begin explaining what's on the screen. Picking up where we left off on the previous lesson, when President Johnson comes in, and uh, again, this is something he inherits. First, it was after the assassination of President Kennedy, and but with his elected term of office, which began in like 1964, in January of 1965, he decides that he wants to kind of make this his foreign policy issue. So, for example, we talked about last lesson about how President Kennedy wanted to make sure, or wanted to try and end the Cold War. President Johnson's foreign policy was he did not want communism to spread anymore throughout uh, Southeast Asia. So he kind of puts all of his eggs, foreign policy-wise, into this basket. So what we did mention was, was how they, we had amped up our bombing, sent over our Air Force, and we were starting to send over more and more troops. This continues on. So initially we were sending over troops to help the South Vietnamese Army in fighting the North Vietnamese. By the end of 1965, 1966, President Johnson has considerably sent over enough troops from the United States that we are now the predominant fighting force. So now it is our, this war is now our war and is no longer, um, at least from the United States standpoint, a civil war between the North and South Vietnamese. So as we start bombing them, we're trying to blow up their supply lines, make sure that they're not getting weapons, food, ammunition, stuff like that. And one of the key things that we use is napalm and bombing them. And that's gonna be one of your key terms in the next section. But literally what napalm is, is this, uh, they call it a jellied gasoline, but it's like sticky fire. So when the uh, bomb drops, this material spreads out, sticks to everything, and then ignites, gets just set ablaze. And so everything it touches just immediately starts burning at a really uh, high temperature, higher than just a normal fire. It was originally used to make, to clear out jungle areas so that we could see the North Vietnamese army. But eventually it's, we start dropping it on uh, actual people themselves, on the army themselves, and eventually civilians get burned by napalm. Uh, and it turns this into uh, something much larger, much more catastrophic than the United States intended. Uh, at least that's what we like to say at this point. And part of the reason they went to such extreme lengths to try and find the opposing army, the North Vietnamese army, was that they were using guerrilla war tactics. So that's kind of sneak attacks by small groups of soldiers not a traditional warfare where you, you know, at least go across a field towards a, an, a, an opposing army or where you have an arranged battle site. They kind of just, uh, as the United States troops are moving throughout Vietnam, they're just being hit on all sides by these small groups that are hiding in the jungle. 
And so they, that was their advantage, was that they knew the terrain, they knew the geography, and they used it to their advantage. Um, and because of that, they're able to move quickly throughout, not just through North Vietnam, but in throughout South Vietnam, in and out and moving and working quickly. Uh, and then on top of that, on top of that, you have the Viet Cong, which is in South Vietnam, which is fighting alongside the North Vietnamese Army, and they're causing all these problems in the United States controlled areas by doing um, bombings and raids on United States bases and so on and so forth. All right, moving on. This is the last slide. One minute and then I'll get started. Now, the toll this takes on American soldiers is a massive one. And so the soldiers are facing conditions that they're not accustomed to or that they can train for. And um, so the jungles in Vietnam were just destroying them mentally because they were uh, very humid. Uh, even more so than what we experience down here. And they're filled with all different kinds of animals like bugs, lizards, snakes, um, all these things that they could not prepare for are attacking them along with the North Vietnamese and, and the Viet Cong. Um, and of course those jungles are everywhere that they would turn is a possible hiding spot for an enemy. And because they are fighting in the midst of a civil war, they are, um, one of the problems that they run into is that the soldiers themselves don't really know, can't tell the difference between the North Vietnamese and the South Vietnamese. So they don't know really the difference between their ally and the people that they're fighting. And this, is gonna ca this causes a lot of problems for them as well, and that people that they think are the enemy are actually their allies. And when they attack them, uh, again, that's going, that's going to create animosity between Vietnamese people and the United States soldiers there. So uh, eventually they're treated very poorly by locals over in Vietnam. And then um, even though they, they, they do their job exactly as they're supposed to do. None of those soldiers, um, at least you know, in the overall history of it, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of defections. There wasn't people just up and leaving and running away. They stayed, they did their job, they served their tour, and they did it very bravely considering what they were facing. But when they got home, they weren't treated very nicely, particularly by the people who were protesting the war. And so over time, many of these soldiers just become disillusioned. They don't know why they're fighting the war. They don't know, uh, they don't really have a whole lot of motivation. And that's going to cause problems with the United States becoming successful. And then back here at home, at the very beginning, what we uh, the things that start raising flags for American citizens are the cost of the war, how much the Defense Department is asking for in terms of paying for this war. Uh, we also are still in the middle of the civil rights movement and moving into what we'll call like the liberation movements. And so a lot of people are trying to figure out why we're going across the world to fight for other people when we still have not secured rights for people here at home. 
And then with the soldiers coming back, they're also telling stories about why people might think that this might not be a winnable war. Which, of course, in the United States, if you're not going to win, what's the point in doing something? And finally, the Defense Department is coming out with a bunch of reports. And a lot of those reports are showing that we are not getting the advantage in Vietnam. And that's going to get a lot of people just to go, why in the world are we there in the first place? And it's going to add fuel to the fire for the protesters against the war. And that's where we stop today.